Hey y'all, welcome to this week's Real Talk. I am excited. I am joined by our Director of Music and Worship. Is that the right title? Yes. Melissa Chavez. Melissa is joining me this week for Real Talk. This is our weekly video check-in series where we just talk about what's happening in our world, in the world of the church, maybe what's going on with sermon series. And so Melissa and I have been playing around with this idea for a while of having her come in just to talk about how music is selected for different worship services, the process of it and everything. So, but I am enamored with somebody that's musically talented. Just because part of my last name is Bach doesn't mean that I'm a musical genius, although I do try to play that a lot in our staff meetings. Um, Melissa is so gifted. I'm just curious, how many different instruments do you play? Um, I play a few. I mean, I, I play instruments at different levels. So I would say my newest instrument is the ukulele because we have a mu ukulele ministry here at Herndon. And so I've been learning to play along with some of our our other um, congregation members of all ages, really. If you want to learn to play the ukulele, uh, Margaret and Lisa and Tammy are awesome. Um, they'll they'll get, give you one and teach you how to play it. I, I play, per, like my best instrument is really my voice. <clears throat> all of my degrees are, are in voice. Um, and then also I play the piano and the organ. Uh, the violin and a little bit of guitar. Wow, that's just that's just awesome. <laughs> um, so, what we, what we really thought about today was we wanted to have a conversation about how music is selected for worship services and what's the process, what goes into it. Some people, like if you didn't know what goes on behind the scenes, like what's going on behind the curtain there, you might think, oh, well, they just pick hymns and you know they just do their thing. There's a lot more that goes into it. So for you, I thought it might be a really interesting opportunity for us to learn from Melissa. Can you just kind of dive into the process from a 10,000 foot view and we'll go down from there? Oh yeah, sure. And um, first I just want to say, I definitely don't have all of the answers about worship planning. Uh, I think worship planning in its very best is a, a reflection of the body of Christ. Lots of different gifts that come together um, to help shape and, and bring this offering of worship together on Sunday morning or Sunday evenings or, or during the week. And so that's always an open invitation. And if you're listening to this, there is a place for you uh, in worship. Yeah, worship is really for everyone to be a part of. And uh, so from a a 10,000 all the way back <laughs> space. Well, our pastoral staff uh, work on selecting the the overall direction of where we're going. And so uh, do we have a sermon series? Are we following the lectionary, which is a, for us is a cycle of readings that occur every three years uh, that sort of walk us through many of the major points of our, our faith in the Bible. Uh, and then we... As musicians, we get to see sort of the overall plan. Uh, and often, sometimes we even get consulted on the plan, although that's definitely not necessary. And uh, we sit down and we really study the scriptures on our own. Mm. We think about the direction of the service. We start to sort of rough draft some music in place, maybe rough draft some ideas around how we might share the scriptures, what kind of voices we'd like to have reading a young voice, an older voice. Uh, and then uh, we bring that all into our worship planning. And we have some of that today, don't we? We do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We do it every Tuesday. So like today, we'll be planning on this week's sermon, which I am actually going to be leading this week on Alleviate Suffering. And so we'll kick around the, the scripture in the room. We'll talk about just different ideas where I think I'm taking the sermon. That What that does is it helps Melissa be able to identify, okay, this is, you know, I was already thinking of this. and Maybe this is a good fit. And so like last week with Jonathan, you know, obviously literally kicking over the tables or turning over the tables um, and then having the, the, the hymn or the song of turning, turning over the tables was just, it was such a beautiful fit. It was like, <laughs> it was like, gosh, I wish everything fit like a glove like that. Um, so I guess one of the things that I, I ask you is how long does it take you to, to pick the music that you want to do? And especially the, the ones that are, are being sung by, by the congregation as well. Oh yeah. Sometimes I think it's a little bit like writing a, writing a paper. Um, sometimes things just flow very quickly and then all of a sudden you're like, Oh, all the pieces are here. And other times it's like a puzzle mm. and you spend, I spend a lot of time really thinking about um, in our blended 10 o'clock service, for example, 
are we reflecting music of a variety of of points in the Christian timeline? Do we have things that are older and things that are newer? Uh, do we have um, who's written our music? Do we have uh, gen do we have our representation of gender and color and lots of different voices in our in our music? And so. It is, it is kind of like a puzzle. And the other puzzle piece is always, and this is my favorite puzzle piece, is who is willing to come and be a part of our worship. Mm. Um, so this past Sunday for Turning Over Tables, I, um, I asked Christy Sullivan if she might play the flute, and then the choir was willing to hop in, and we had Luis and Shannon and myself. And so I took a piece of music that wasn't written for that those forces, and I rearranged it for that. And that is oftentimes the largest the largest time commitment is the rearranging. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I actually brought it with me because I was hoping you'd ask about it. But um, so this is our this is our piece of music from from Sunday that we did in response, um, turning over tables by the brilliance. And, uh, what I do is I, I, this piece of music was perfect fit for what we were doing. And so I wrote it out uh, and reimagined it for our church, for our musicians, rather than trying to just copy a song, um, bringing the essence of it here with our Herndon community and those who want to lead in worship. Uh, and actually, I thought it was I thought it was wonderful. It was yeah. amazing. <laughs> um, so one of the things that I think is really cool is I, I'm glad we don't use the lectionary. I, I think lectionary has a place for everyone. But what I what I've seen and where I've been, I, I've guest preached at other churches where they've used the lectionary and they just pick the music from there. And there's no thought to the rhythm or the way that the service is going, like the service is upbeat, the sermon's upbeat, and then we have a very slow death march type of hymn. <laughs> or vice versa, like, you know, we, we were very solemn and now we're like, hey, everybody, let's jump up for joy, and, and it doesn't match. And so I think that those are, those are really important gifts that someone like you as a trained professional that's, you know, educated in this in this world of being able to identify that and pick that out. So when we go into this meeting that we're getting ready to go into, you know, we'll have these kind of conversations. What do you listen for in that meeting? Oh, so much. I I try to listen first I think we're all listening for the the little leans and surprises of the Holy Spirit because mm -hmm. sometimes even in those meetings Maybe what we thought what the sermon or the Sunday was going to be about, by the time it's done, we find ourselves like really enthusiastic about something adjacent or different or or whatever it is. And so for for that reason, even though I do rough draft the music, mm -hmm. I try not to hold on to it too tightly mm -hmm. so that I can go in and say, hey, OK, yeah, let's let's go with wherever whatever path we're being led on today. Um, but then what I'm really listening for is sort of where what is this sort of the energy like that we want to bring into the service what yes. is the energy of the music and one of the wonderful things about having spent a lot of time learning about music and how it works is that most music can sort of be finessed or changed or or really um made to support where we're going rather than ever feeling like we're competing yes. together yeah that's that's and that's kind of really what i was uh trying to hone in on is that it's really important to understand the temperature of the room, right? Like, you know, if people are, are praying, you don't come in like, hey, you know, <laughs> so it's the same thing with music. And I, and I think that the way that, that it's it's portrayed music is such an important part of worship that I have been thankful and lucky enough to be in churches where music has been really important. And, um, you know, we have, a you know, probably the in my old church at St. Matthew's, the premier handbell director and all of the United States and Nancy Capel and she just she runs everything and it's just beautiful and I love the handbells being able to hear different instruments I think is really cool having Helen come in to play the violin Christy to play the flute you know we've had um, I think we've had a cello we've had the ukuleles we've had obviously keyboard and pianos bassoon, bassoon handbells yes, mm -hmm. lots handbells. of different singers and voices what what helps you decide on who to bring in is it because they're available or is it because the music could really use this type of instrument yeah it's really a combination of both uh i like to see who's available of course and then i'm also thinking about 
again about the variety, I think something that I, I've learned as a value here at Herndon is we really love to watch our brothers and sisters in Christ use their gifts mm. in worship and outside of worship. Yes. That's that's something that brings a lot of joy to our community. And so I often think about who hasn't had an opportunity, um, who, you know, I think about that. Oh, we haven't heard the viola for a while. Let's ask Helen or, mm. you know, or whatever it is. But I, I also really think about the music and the tone and the color and the energy that each one of those instruments brings. A uh, viola brings a very different energy than a guitar, mm -hmm. than the organ, <laughs> mm -hmm. than a ukulele. And so it's, and then I start to think about how I can make the music all work in a way that supports the instruments we have on that Sunday. Yeah. So we have Holy Week coming up. We do. <laughs> we have a lot of different feelings and themes and you know, picking music out for Good Friday versus picking music out for Easter Sunday, I'm assuming is completely different. Yeah. How, how will you go through that process? Well, when it comes to Easter, I feel that that is one of our, our great open doors uh, for visitors, mm -hmm. you know, who maybe might not be able to come to a church on every Sunday, but on that Sunday, it's really important. They're able to reprioritize their time or their schedules in order to come in and celebrate uh, with us as a family or as an individual. And so on Easter Sunday, honestly, I love the hymns of Easter that we love to sing. I love brass. I love choir. I love all the things that makes make it feel like really like a high holy day. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in contrast, on Easter Vigil, which is uh, this year we're holding the night before at 630, that's a service of storytelling. Uh, and that is very much, I have a where I have a guitar and a campfire and we're singing, you know, the Lord said to Noah, we're going to build an arky, arky, telling the stories that we, that we know and love from the Bible through song, um, through creativity, through maybe there may even be a tiny little moment of um, finding a plastic Easter egg and uh, talking about Jesus coming out with the tomb, just creative down to earth, let your hair down, worship and just enjoy. Yeah. You can imagine um, <laughs> and just enjoy the stories that, that remind us that from the very beginning, God has been speaking love to us. Yeah. Um, and what a great way to prepare your heart for Easter is Easter Vigil, because you hear all of all of the stories of God's great love for you. And man, it's just amazing. And then totally different energy. Good Friday, yes. the, the day when Jesus died, which is so solemn and really reflects on a moment, um, like really a moment of crisis, uh, a moment in our faith when when everything seemed really dark and really difficult. And I think, um, of course, historically in that moment, um, the Christians, uh, followers of Jesus, were gathered together on that dark time, on that dark day, and um, and felt that, that sense of loss and difficulty and also the holiness of, of that moment. And and as we gather, I mean, of course, that music is going to have a completely a completely different tone and the look of our space with mm -hmm. all of the decorations removed, uh, very plain. Um, it reminds us that, well, first of all, I think this kind of speaks to your sermon this Sunday, that we're going to have times in life where we feel like everything's been stripped away. Yeah. yeah. That rug just went poop right out from underneath us. And, um, and that the joy of Easter is still coming around the corner. Yeah. Um, but like creating that space musically. Oh, it's so fun and so holy. And then on Thursday, we have the sort of this walk through immersive worship experience for which we have recorded music. Yeah. All those things. Yeah. It's going to be a great time here at Herndon United Methodist Church. Obviously, we are so blessed to have somebody like Melissa with her skill set, her energy. Are you kidding me? Hello. <laughs> Um, it's the curly hair. It's, well, yeah. yeah, it's kinetic energy. And you have the hair, that, you know, <laughs> that Jonathan and I don't. But that's okay. That's okay. We are excited for this coming up Sunday. We hope that you'll join us at 10 o'clock and do a fellowship hall. And then at 5 o'clock in the sanctuary for our casual service. And then don't forget about Holy Week. Um, more will come up about that next week. But I just really wanted to, to thank Melissa for coming in, teaching us how this music is 
is brought together. Don't be afraid to go up and ask Melissa afterwards, like, wow, how did you come up with that? Because sometimes you'll get a really cool story about it. So Melissa, thanks. Yeah, thank you. And if you're listening to this again, if you want to participate in worship um, and you feel a little and you just want to do that, come walk up to either of us and tell us. We want to get you plugged in. If you want to read, if you want to um, tell a dramatic story, if you want to play an instrument, if you want to sing. And actually, if you want to be a part of the great fun of worship and you're not sure if you have skills to do it, don't worry. We will we will help you get them. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And don't worry. If you see us <laughs> laughing on stage, it's because something happened that we weren't preparing for. <laughs> and so that, that, that happened this week with Jonathan kicking the table off of the stage. <laughs> Um, but overall, we have a great time. We hope that you'll consider coming up and, and being part of worship service. But if nothing else, come out and join us in person. We'd love to see you. And if you can't, obviously online through YouTube on the Hernan app is, is available as well. So, Melissa, thanks. Hey, thank you All for right. letting me come on in. Everybody have a great week.